welcome back to another video um i know in the last few weeks people have done or are still doing or will do their mock exams i've noticed that uh, i've had quite a few questions from students about how to start essays for example how to do an introduction so this video is going to show you guys how to write an easy introduction no matter what text you're doing and it's adaptable to be used over various topics and subjects. There are examples, and I've done one for Shakespeare, a novel, the play, and poetry. So you can use this, and hopefully it will help. So, let's get started. Um, introductions are actually a lot easier than people realise. Um, a lot of people don't think that you can do an introduction in just a couple of sentences, but you can. The introduction will help the examiner know what text you're doing, what the question is, and shows that you have at least some understanding of where this essay will be going based on how you do the introduction. It's just, like I said, introduction is just a quick intro to the essay. So it's nothing too complicated, it'll be a few sentences long, but it will make a big difference to how the tone of your essay is for the rest of the exam. So what do you need? The first thing you need to do is to reword the question given so that the examiner knows what you're answering because they are only giving your answer booklet and it's easier for them to see what you're answering straight away from the very first sentence. It makes it so much easier for everybody. Add the title and the full name of the writer. Again, it makes it so much easier for the examiner to see what you're doing and to make it easy for them, don't we? <laughs> and add any relevant context. Not too much, but enough to let them know what you know. It's just a little splash of context to show them that you understand some of the background that you will go into more detail later on for why this question or why some, whatever it is happened in that play, novel or poem. Make sense? So, examples. I've, like I said, I have done examples for the Shakespeare, I've done examples for the novel or novella and examples for another play and examples for poems. These are just introductions. So there's the question and then the introduction as how I would suggest you do it. And it's simple, just a few sentences. They're about three to four sentences each. And you'll see what I'm talking about when I say question, title, and context. So explore how Shakespeare presents Lady Macbeth as powerful. For those of you who do Macbeth, you have probably seen this question and you've probably done this question and it's probably one of those ones that have popped up so many times that you're probably sick of it. But there is a right way to do it. So, the play Macbeth by William Shakespeare explores the different ways that the character Lady Macbeth is portrayed as powerful. Women during the Jacobean era were not seen as important and, as a result, were not viewed as powerful. However, Lady Macbeth does several things that, although can be viewed as powerful and ambitious moves, directly oppose societal expectations of women during that time period. I think I did about three sentences there, although it did sound like quite a bit. The reason why Macbeth needs to be, the title of the play Macbeth needs to be in apostrophes is because it is an eponymous play, in that the character has the same name as the title of the play. So you need to differentiate whenever you're talking about the play as a whole and the character. And the best way to do that is to use apostrophes to show that this is the title. Do not use quotation marks because quotation marks are for when you're quoting use an apostrophe to show this but there's three sentences there you've got the title of the play the full name of the writer and the question so how is Lady Macbeth portrayed as powerful then you've added in context of what people expected of women at the time and how Lady Macbeth may or may not go against those expectations it's not that bad and it's not that hard to do and I know you can do it 
So let's move on to another example. How does Dickens portray Scrooge as redeemed? So redemption is a very important theme in the novel. So I thought I'd do a question on that. So the novella, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, explores the idea of redemption and remorse by using the influence of Christian Victorian ideals. Many Victorians were stoutly religious, like the author, and therefore believed that being generous at Christmas was a Christian duty. Scrooge was given a chance to redeem himself at the end of the novel to fit in with those ideals. So we've given them what we're answering, we've given them the title, we've given them the writer, and we've given them a bit of context. Not too much context, but enough to show that you know why Scrooge was allowed to be redeemed. You will obviously be going into more detail later on in your essay to show that you understand the context in more detail. And context is vital, it is an AO3, we need it in there. <laughs> you gain marks for it, to leave it out is just atrocious. Another example. How does Priestley present Mrs. Berlin as an unlikable character? I know a lot of you do in his protocols, not all, a lot of you do, but this is why I picked it. So, The Play and Inspector Calls by J.B. Priestley explores whether Mrs. Berlin is an unlikable character. As a woman of the upper classes during the Edwardian era, Mrs. Berlin did not work and only volunteered for a charitable organisation. Women were expected to stay at home and run the household, therefore Mrs. Berlin did not socialise with those of the lower classes. I think you're starting to understand where I'm going with this, so you've got the title of the play, writer's full name, and the question all in the very first sentence, and then the context takes up another sentence or two. Most of these I think have been only three or four sentences, and it, it's very simple to do, but you can see how it's a great way to start the essay. And it adds a lot more sophistication than just going straight and saying, Shakespeare presents Macbeth as da 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 da. It doesn't show what you know, it just means you went into it. And it doesn't take a lot of time. I know obviously we're in a time limit, you are only allowed a certain amount of time to do your answers. This will take approximately two to three minutes. You need to show them where you're starting, you need to show them where you're ending. Introduction and conclusion is very important. Last example. So explore the power of explore how the power of man is presented in Ozymandias and one other poem collection. Now some of you aren't doing poetry this year, but some of you are, although you also are doing the unseen poetry, so but this is from the Power and Conflict AQA collection. And I know year 10s will be doing it next year, so you guys might as well get ready. So, the poem Ozymandias by Percy Shelley uses the historical statue of Ramesses II to explore the power of man throughout the ages. Although the statue is from thousands of years ago, it had been dis rediscovered in the late 18th century and was considered a deep mystery by people at the time. Another poem that also explores the power of man is My Last Duchess by Robert Browning, which describes the power of a selfish husband over his beautiful late wife's portrait. Browning based this poem on the Duke of Ferrara, a man who historically had three wives who all died in mysterious circumstances. So this way, what you've done is you've taken the poem they've given you, and you've also told them which poem you are going to be doing as your comparison. Getting that out of the way early lets them know that you've thought about why you've done this. So it's looking at the power of man in different ways. One was looking at Ozymandias and his hubris, and the other one was looking at Duke of Ferreira and his selfishness, and the power he held over his wives. <laughs> but again, like I said, getting it out of the way straight away in the introduction shows the examiner that you know what you're doing, and why you're doing it. If you don't put in the second poem in the introduction and you wait until later on, it could be that the examiner assumes you didn't know straight away and just threw something in at the very end and just thought, okay, as a man is, I'm just gonna compare it to, I don't know, Kamikaze, just something. Although Kamikaze and Power of Man might be a possibility, 
I mean, <laughs> that'll be a whole other video. But getting it out of the way is the best thing. Okay? Was this useful? I know that there was a lot of examples, however, each one followed the same format. I did it on purpose because I want you guys to get used to that format. It's an easy format to learn and it's something very, very easy to adapt and implement into your own writing. It's not gonna take a lot of effort. You don't have to memorize a lot of things. It's just, you need to know the stuff that you're new. So a little bit of context and knowing the writer, it, it does help to know the writer. <laughs> than the title of whatever text you're doing and I want you guys to do really really well which is why I did this video so if this video was useful please share like and subscribe it does actually help the algorithm it helps my channel so please 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 do that um, if you have a question leave a comment I do respond to comments especially when they've got questions involved just because I like to help everybody and follow my social media accounts so Hannah I am on Instagram and I am Hannah I am on Twitter and I will see you guys for the next video bye